setup video here using this T-Rex behind me. All the same principles apply for any helicopter with any mechanical setup. I'm not going to go into the radio or the fly barless unit or electronic setup. I want to keep this fairly generalized so you can use it and apply it to any helicopter. You're going to need a couple tools. I've got a set of calipers here which I'm going to use for measuring the linkages and for a straight edge just to give my eye a better reference point to make sure that everything's lined up and at 90 degrees. I've got a pitch gauge here to measure our pitch values for when you would go to set up your fly barless unit. A set of balling pliers for snapping the links on and off. It makes it a lot easier than having to use your fingers. And just a basic set of Allen keys and a Phillips screwdriver to remove your hardware so you can pull your servo horns on and off. So uh, you can sit back and follow along while I go through the basic mechanical setup. First I'm going to set up my tail rotor servo and the tail rotor linkage. The first thing you need to do is power on your helicopter and center the tail rotor servo. So before we power it on, you want to pull the servo horn off the servo just in case it's so far off that it throws the horn all the way over to one side and causes some binding. So right now I'm going to power on the model, wait for everything to initialize. Right now the tail rotor servo should be centered. So you want to find the best possible position for that servo horn to be 90 degrees. Which is going to be right there. As close as we can, we take our straight edge to 90 degrees as possible. You can adjust your overall linkage so that this bell crank back here, the intermediate tail bell crank, is also at 90 degrees. Which you can see right there that it is. So you may need to shorten or lengthen that linkage a little bit to get the desired 90 degrees on either end. But once that's said and done, it should look like this. So you've got your 90 degrees up here and your 90 degrees back there. That covers the front frame portion of the tail rotor servo. Same basic 90 degree rule applies back here on the aft end of the tail rotor as well. So you want to adjust your long tail rotor control push rod until you get this bell crank here at 90 degrees and in the center of its travel. So you can see right there, it's all the way in against the tail box and out there up against the tail rotor hub. You want that linkage adjusted so that when the servo's at center, that that bell crank is at 90 degrees. With our tail rotor linkage and tail rotor servo setup complete, we can move on with the cyclic servo setup. We need to do the same thing that we did with the tail rotor servo by centering it before we put the servo horn on. But before we do that, you need to make sure that all your servos are working in the correct direction. If you set up the model with one of the servos reversed or all of the servos reversed, when you go back after the fact and reverse everything to the right direction, you'll probably have to recenter everything just because the servo is not 100% perfect for the centering in either direction. So it's very important that you make sure that all your servos are working in the correct direction before doing anything. So once that's done, power the model on and make sure that the servo horn is 90 degrees to the servo. So our servo is centered and this particular line servo horn has several different spots that you can try the horn onto the splines before you have to use any sub trim. So definitely try every position and get the best spot that you can without using sub trim. Nine out of ten times you won't have to use any at all, but if you do need to use a couple percent here and there that's alright too. So you can use your straight edge and line it up with the control balls here and here and the screw or bolt that holds the servo horn onto the servo. This longer arm will give your eye a better visual so you can tell whether or not it's at 90 degrees. Once you've got that at 90 degrees, you can adjust these two links here to make this bell crank parallel to your servo horn. It's important that both these links are the exact same length. If one's longer than the other, then you'll get a little bit of binding. So if I pop that link off there, you can see when I push it back over the ball, it doesn't affect the servo line. If I went and lengthen that, we'll say, and tried to pop that back onto the ball, you'll see that it pushes the servo horn forward and causes it to bind. So you want to adjust those linkages so that they're the same length and that no binding occurs. Shorten that back to where it was, and I can push it over the ball and it doesn't affect the servo. So snap that on and verify that your servo horn is 90 degrees, your bell crank is parallel with it, and that there's no binding. Once that's done, you can move on and do the rotor head setup above the swash plate. It's important to move from the servo up to the blades. That way you've got a verified reference or a verified setup 
each step so you're not going to make any mistakes. So we need to do this servo, your elevator servo, and your other roll servo on the other side of the frame. Once you've got that done, then we can move on, like I say, with the rotor head setup above the swash plate. Alright, moving on above the swash plate, we've only got a few linkages we have to deal with, which is pretty simple. The swash plate height is fixed by this anti-rotation A-arm right here. The plastic link threads all the way in, bottoms out on the A-arm, which sets the height of this forward ball. So all you need to do is adjust these aft two linkages to level the swash plate. You can either use a swash plate leveling tool or you can do it by eye. I've always had good results just doing it by eye. So once you've got your swash plate level, you need to adjust these two links going from the rotating portion of your swash plate up to the blade grip so that you've got zero pitch while you're at half stick and all of your servos and bell cranks are all at 90 degrees. I usually just do one blade and then mirror that linkage over to the other side and nine times out of ten you won't even have to track the model. If you've got the other style, the non-DFC, you'll have a swash driver depending on the version of rotor head. It'll either be built into the head block and you won't have to worry about anything or it'll be on its own hub and the hub will have to be set or positioned on the main shaft so that the anti-rotation links or arms are 90 degrees at half stick just like everything else is. So with this particular head all you've got to worry about are these two links. I'm going to go and bolt this faux fly bar onto where the head button would usually go and we'll take some measurements to set our pitch values. Alright so I've got the pitch gauge on the blade and the faux fly bar mounted to the top of the head block and all we're going to do to get an accurate pitch reading is line the top of this pitch gauge up with the faux fly bar on the hub of the rotor head. So once those two lines meet you'll have an accurate pitch reading over here by this dial. So I'm at half stick now. I'm going to twist this dial until I line up the top of the pitch gauge with the faux fly bar. It looks pretty lined up right there. And I'm showing just a degree. Initially when I set this up, I didn't use the pitch gauge. I flew it and then I adjusted the pitch so that it felt like zero degrees at center. So I'm not going to be too worried about that one degree at half stick. If we want to measure full pitch, you'll bring the collective stick up to the top and then do the exact same thing. You want to line the faux fly bar up with the top of that pitch gauge. So to measure our cyclic pitch, we need to go back to zero degrees of collective. And it is important that you get it at zero degrees, not half stick on the transmitter, zero degrees pitch on your blade. So line that up so you've got zero degrees and then grab your transmitter and right here just push the cyclic stick forward and hold it and then adjust that dial on the pitch gauge so we've got our, the top of that lined up again with the faux fly bar. Right there you can see I've got 11 degrees of cyclic. You want to measure your four aft cyclic or your elevator while the blades are in this position. If you were to measure your uh, aileron or roll cyclic the blades would have to be over the tail boom and the canopy. On an OS motor you've got a couple little index marks in your throttle barrel to tell you the position of your carburetor opening. Right here on the end you've got the closed position. They generally like to idle right when those two lines are meeting. Not when they're centered together like that but when the edge of one is touching the edge of the other. So that's where we'll set our idle. But you want to make sure that over here at half stick, 50% throttle, you've got your arms straight up and down. And then at full throttle over here lined up with this Once mark. you've got the control horn installed correctly on your throttle barrel, you need to do the same thing for your throttle servo. So you'll power the model on and go to half stick on a perfectly linear throttle curve with an endpoint of 100 on 100 which will put your servo in the center of its travel at 50%. Once the servo is at that point, you can pop the servo horn on so it's straight up and down 90 degrees to the servo body. Then you need to adjust the length of this linkage so that you get your servo horn and the control arm on your throttle barrel perfectly parallel. If this linkage was a little bit long, you'd have an offset between the two in that direction, or if it was a little bit short, you'd have an offset in the opposite direction. Once you've got that done, you can snap that on and adjust the endpoints in your servo to make sure you've got no binding on the throttle.